four. In the shadow of a fallen city, Shizuma, a former samurai, seeks redemption for Aizu's run. While navigating a world torn by politics, will he find his missing fiance while restoring Aizu's lost glory? In the early 70s, a new governing system arose with the start of an industrial age and attempted to take down the great city of Aizu. The new government featured soldiers with advanced weaponry, and they easily overtook the samurai of Aizu, who had nothing but swords for weapons. Their weapons were no match for the soldiers of the new age, as they were pierced with bullets before they could even make a move. Among the brave samurais of Aizu was an exceptional fighter named Shizuma, who managed to kill some of the enemy soldiers. His friend and fellow samurai, Genosuke noticed that he had managed to kill one of the enemy soldiers and praised him for it. But in the midst of all these, they were ambushed by enemy soldiers who managed to get a shot past them. One of the bullets made its way through Genosuke's chest, making him topple over. Shizuma rushed to his rescue without a second glance at the injury he had also sustained to his arm. They rushed to the cover of the woods where Shizuma tried to nurse his friend, but Genosuke restrained him telling him that it was too late. Shizuma promised Genosuke that he would kill as many soldiers as he could before joining him in death. But while taking his last breath, Genosuke asked Shizuma to promise him that he would find his younger sister and restore the lost glory of Aizu. After Genosuke's death, the city of Aizu was laid to ruins by the new government and its soldiers bringing about the start of a new world. Few years later, Shizuma continued to search for Genosuke's sister with nothing but an old photograph that Genosuke had given him. In a bid to find Genosuke's missing sister, Shizuma had become a rickshaw runner, making it easier for him to ask for his fiancé's whereabouts. On one sunny afternoon, while Shizuma was making roundabout inquiries about Genosuke's sister, a man called him and asked him to give him a ride. While Shizuma raced the man around the city, the man named Takichi told him of how he was once a samurai and complained about how former samurais were forced to live from hand to mouth due to lack of jobs in the new world. However, Shizuma didn't believe him because he found it hard to believe that anyone from Aizu could be rich in the new world. After they had gotten to Takichi's final destination, he asked Shizuma to help him purchase a pair of sandals before leaving. Later that day, Takichi holds a meeting with some shady people who plan to overthrow the new government. Later that night, Takichi and some other men attack Iwakura Tomomi, one of the key ministers in the new government. Iwakura managed to escape by jumping into the river, but Takichi and his men assumed that he was dead and left. Later on, Iwakura was rescued and treated by some militants. Meanwhile, some government officials planned to secretly search for Iwakura's assaulters so as not to scare the people. Later on, Shizuma is Ian lamenting to a friend about how he can't afford the rich meals that the upperclassmen were eating when some soldiers walked up to him and demanded that he followed after them. They inform him that Minister Iwakura was assaulted the previous night, and they had found a sandal at the site of the incidents. The sandal was also revealed to be the same sandal that Shizuma had purchased for Takichi the previous night. After discovering that Shizuma is a citizen of Aizu, the soldiers demanded that Takichi followed them as they assumed that he held grudges against the current government and was more likely to be guilty. Takichi's friend tries to defend him, but the soldiers punch him in anger. Shizuma is so vexed by this that he punches the soldier and scurries off. He promises his friend that he would clear his name, and he knows who had actually committed the crime. Shizuma raced over to the same location where he had dropped off Takichi, but he doesn't find him there. However, a maid informs him that Takichi had gone out to gamble. At the gambling house, Takichi revels that one of the workers had cheated during the game and steals the money from him right after his underlings had knocked him out. Shizum meets people fighting at the gambling den and realizes that Takechi was responsible for this. He also realizes that he's not trustworthy and decides to follow after him. Meanwhile, Takechi makes plans with his men and some escorts who instruct him to kill Minister Okubo that night. Shizuma follows Takechi and his men and confronts them while asking Takechi to clear his name, but Takechi attempts to kill him. Okubo's carriage passes at that exact moment and Takichi attacks Shizuma while the other men assault the carriage. They're surprised when the first man is killed by a gunshot, and the militant reveals himself to be Okubo's right-hand man, who had devised a clever plan to send the minister down a different route. Shizuma assists the man in taking down Takichi and his men. Meanwhile, Takichi is stunned to discover that Shizuma was also a former samurai after studying his fighting style. Later on, Okubo's right-hand man visits Shizuma and offers him a spot as a police officer. We're left in suspense as Shizuma ponders about this while the anti-government party hold another meeting. 
They ask a man named Eto to lead them in place of Takichi, who had been captured by the government, but Ito refuses. However, a veiled villain reveals himself after Ito leaves and informs the ladies that Ito must play his role in the party. Later on, Shizuma struggles with the challenges of adapting to his role as a policeman, as he is mocked by some miscreants for his elevated role as a policeman, despite his history as a rickshaw runner and a former citizen of Aizu. Struggling to find his place, past he becomes entangled in a confrontation with Chindai military men. On another end, Shuragami tries to join forces with the prestigious Moria clan. However, faced with rejection, he takes matters into his own hands by eliminating the rival Duyama clan. This bold move earns him the respect of the Moria clan, finally leading to his acceptance among their ranks. A mysterious woman, Mary Blackwood, introduces herself as an English reporter. She secures an interview with Takichi, Shizuma's former friend turned foe and gets information from him about Hinazuru a geisha's involvement in providing details about Tomomi's schedule and supplying a pistol. Within the town, the geisha Hinazuru tries to acquire more weapons. Etao Shinpei, a former counselor, arrives in town with aspirations for a peaceful political resolve. However, his arrival coincides with the warriors in Saga arming themselves, hoping he will lead them against the government. This development indicates potential political unrest and disruption. Meanwhile, Shuragami seizes an opportunity to address injustice by offering to punish a Chindai who assaulted a Moria worker. On another end, the Chindai launch an attack on the police barracks to free one of their own. This leads to a confrontation where Shuragami and Shizuma unexpectedly find themselves fighting side by side against the common enemy, the Chindai forces. Later on, Zenbei Kuraya, who was once known as Samurai Masayomi Kuramoto, operates under the disguise of a hunting club. Kuraya indulges in a disturbing habit of nighttime violence against women. Sumi Kanamata, now known as Hinazuru, the geisha, is revealed as the lone survivor of a previous killing spree carried out by Kuraya and his forces. Shizuma learns of Kuraya's heinous activities, prompting him and his partner Hidenobu Osanai to take matters into their own hands. The duo decides to go on a mission in order to confront Kuraya, and this leads to a tense and dangerous showdown. Kuraya and his gang target Hinazuru's friend Kume. However, with the assistance of police reinforcements, Shizuma and Osanai successfully captured Kuraya and his associates. Things, however, go out of control when Hinazuru takes matters into her own hands, shooting and killing Kuraya from a distance. To bring an end to the hunting club's reign of terror, Goro Fujita is assigned to eliminate the last remaining member attempting to escape by train. This finally ensures the dissolution of the dangerous activities of Kuraya and his associates. The anime ends here. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and like if you want me to make a part two.